Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Around four months ago, I created a doll version of a character from one of my favourite shows, which of course was Wurt from Cartoon Network's Over the Garden Wall. Wurt is just one half of the story's dynamic duo, so of course I should make the other. Before we get started, don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, like the video if you like it, and comment. I love reading all of your comments. With that all being said, let's get started creating Gregory. In the previous installment, work was created using the head of a fail-fix doll I used as a base for sculpting, which allowed me to create a unique stylized face. While this worked for Wirt, it didn't exactly work the same for Greg. While Wirt is a teenager, Greg is just a child, so I couldn't repeat using the same fail-fix head as a base due to the head's proportions compared to Greg's short stature. So I experimented with a different doll as the base. One of those new age Harry Potter dolls. I started the same as Wirt, cutting holes for the eyes and sculpting onto the vinyl. The material I use is milliput and epoxy clay. I worked on this on and off for a couple of days, but decided, nope, I hate this, not only does it not blend in aesthetically with the previous doll, it just looks really ugly. <laughs> I'll have to start again, this time from complete scratch. Instead of sculpting physically onto a doll base, I decided to try sculpting on the computer. First I took photos of my work doll from the front and the side, and added lines to the facial features to act as a guide. In ZBrush, I sculpted up my work head into a 3D model, almost as an aesthetic guide to sculpting Greg's head. For sculpting Greg, the facial references and inspiration I used were that of Christian Convery from Sweet Tooth and Bella Ramsey, specifically their sweet V-shaped smile, and created this. Put it side by side with Wirt's head and you can see I tried to make familial features so they looked similar but unique, like siblings are. Once I was happy with how Greg's head looked, I hollowed out the model and created eye holes and a skull cap. And with that I can print him out on my resin printer. With the head washed and cured, I can start prepping the head for painting. I like to go over face prints with a buffing sandpaper to remove any lines from the printing layers. The body I'm going to be using for Greg will be this 1 8 scale Pico Nemo body, though I do admit I'm not 100% sure that's the brand. All I know is it was like pulling teeth to get my hands on. It took about four months. The first order, my dyslexia struck, and I accidentally ordered $30 worth of doll hands. The second was refunded, and the third was sent to the wrong house. The anxiety of knowing that somebody was sent a tiny box with a headless doll inside with my name on it was palpable. <laughs> Back to the head. Let's prime it for painting. I sprayed the head with Citadel Wraithbone spray paint. I will paint on a layer with Vallejo Light Flesh Acrylic Paint. I generally go two or three layers with Vallejo Paint, then seal everything in with a layer or two of Vallejo Matte Varnish. Once the varnish is dry, we can create the face. To start, I'm going to go in with light colours. Pastels in peach and yellow to add undertones, which will bring so much life to the face. With a light pink, I add blush to the centre of the nose and outwards towards the cheeks. I sprayed the face with some matte varnish to seal that layer and oh, that blush ink just got a little bit too dark. No need to stress though, we can fix it. Before we do that, I'll take the opportunity to build up some line work. Grabbing a watercolour pencil, I'm going to start filling in the corners of the mouth. Oh, 
Oh, it's so grainy. That's okay, we, we can fix it. <laughs> Grabbing a fine tip brush and a tiny bit of water, I'll just activate that watercolour paint. To fix that over-pigmented section, I'll grab a pigment powder similar to the base. I use a mixture of a very pastel peach and pink and a straight up white powder for this. Whatever you see as the lightest colour of the face, just try to replicate that in a powder and blend it all over the face. But keep in mind when doing a matte varnish on top, it can get darker, just like it did previously, so just be mindful of that. Now I can start creating the eyes with my watercolour pencil paints and acrylic paints. At this point in the face up, I gave the head a varnish and let it sit overnight. When I came back to it the next day, I saw this. A smudge or something. I was kicking myself all day for it, thinking I must have bumped it while it was drying, and in all honesty was giving myself a very hard time for being clumsy. It's only when editing I noticed something, and I can't believe I caught this on camera. I'm setting up for the day here, prepping my paints, my wet palette, I swivel my chair to go grab some brushes and, as I do, Apollo gets swung onto the table and, as parrots do, gives it the smallest nibble and the wet palette lid, then walks away and I come back none the wiser. I should have learnt from that time that Burgess, my other bird, ate my Frankie Stein head. I guess it's the inevitable part of having free roam parrots. <laughs> At this point I'll seal all my work in and let the face sit. Let's start creating with clay. Over the garden walls vintage Americana style leans into that homemade, perfectly imperfect look. Something that can only really be replicated by hand and not in a computer. With Fimo clay I'm going to create Greg's hat, his upside down teapot. Because he's an elephant, of course, it's his trunk. Creating a circle and a rectangle of the same length of the circle's circumference, I'll try and mesh these pieces together until it resembles a teapot.
To make the eyes, I roll some more polymer clay in two balls, around half a centimetre wide. And with a Korean metal chopstick, I'll just start shaping the iris. Once I was happy with that, I just pop that out of the head and bake them. <laughs> we found our lucky frog. We gotta name him for good luck. You can't have Greg without Wirt Jr. Jason Funderburker, George Washington, whatever Greg decides to name his frog today. I just sculpted him up in ZBrush with basic shapes, making a standing model and a limbless model, which I ended up using in the end. This will be so I can stow him away inside Greg's clothes. I painted him up off camera as I was having quite a bad shaking hand day, so do excuse that. Time to paint our models. Let's start with a teapot. I used Games Workshop's Citadel Black Spray Paint to prime the model. Once that was dry, I went in with two coats of Citadel Stormhost Silver. Adding black as the base to metallic paints always makes the colour and shimmer just pop. Vintage silver pots always get texture with use. I created a wash paint by watering down a black acrylic paint and messily washed that all over the pot. This should hopefully replicate that worn look. Want to learn some rock facts? It's a rock fact! It's a rock fact! I couldn't make Greg without making his pet rock. How would he tell his rock facts? With some set polymer clay for the rock, I painted him up with acrylic paint. Once that was dry, I sealed it all in with some UV gel top coat. Usually in making eyes, I love adding details. For this doll, however, I felt it wasn't necessary. Having a rich brown colour would make Greg's face look kind and sweet enough. To create the pupil of the eye, I attached a plastic black gem and added a piece of glitter as the catch light. Sealing it all together with some UV gel nail top coat, curing it under my UV light. Let's create the clothes. I was lucky enough to find this scrap of a lovely textured green cotton. A textured pattern on fabric for doll clothes can make it look so much more realistic. A uniform colour can sometimes make clothes look fake. I sketched out a rough design for some pattern pieces after looking online at patterns for toddler overalls. A straightforward design, just sew the back and front panels, add the top and back, and then sew the sides and crotch together. Easy enough. Though I do admit, I did have to do this twice. <laughs> With some white polyester fabric, I melted the material with a lighter to stop it from fraying and sewed it straight onto the legs and feet to create socks. In the same fabric, I created a shirt and can't forget his tiny little tie. 
When I created Wurt, I really disliked the shoes that I made for him. I don't really know how to do shoes very well, so I want to learn. I bought this big roll of warbler from Lumen's workshop. Warbler is a moldable material used primarily in cosplay. So it should work for dolls, right? This material is quite expensive. A 75 times 40 centimeter slab will set you back around 45 Australian dollars. So I want to be as sparing as possible with this material to minimize scraps. Once the pattern is cut, we can start molding. Using my hairdryer, I'm going to apply heat to activate the material. Working quickly, I'm going to mold it onto the foot. I don't recommend adding the warbler straight to the doll like I'm doing here, as it can melt into the doll. Yep, I'm, I'm not going to pretend like I haven't done it. <laughs> I did. So just as a warning. Once the material is hard again, I can adjust and snip away any excess, heat it up and mold again. With two sides of the pattern stuck together, I can add the sole to the shoe. Once it was dry, I sprayed it with some black spray paint and gave it a layer of gloss varnish. For the hair, I'm going to use this colour from this multicoloured yarn. This is a 100% acrylic yarn from the brand Lion Brand. I made a basic wig cap from craft tape and paper mache. With the brushed out yarn, I'm going to start gluing it to the wig. I always find it much easier to work in layers for short hairstyles. Attach the yarn, cut the hair into shape and repeat. I sprayed the hair with the got to be glued hairspray to set the style. We only just got this in Sydney, or at least where I live. I've always seen people use it when they install wigs, so I've always really wanted to get it. I sprayed it on and let it set overnight, and oh my gosh, that stuff is strong. I couldn't even brush the hair out with my toothbrush, I had to get it like a proper brush. I think it's about time to start assembling this doll. Let's start by attaching the teapot. Popping off the wig from the head, I'll attach the teapot by gluing some wire to the middle. I'll pierce that wire through the wig and glue it to the inside. Attaching the eyes, it took a long time to maneuver them into position. They're just so um, tiny <laughs> and hard to keep in place. But once I was able to, I glued them down with some hot glue. Before I go further, I'll attach the head to the body. This body has a component that sits inside the head. And with a tiny screw, you can attach them all together. Once I was happy, I just glued the skull cap to the head with a glue gun. I went with hot glue instead of anything stronger, just in case the eyes needed maintenance or the head pops off. 
as it did. Ugh, no! Fucking hell. Ah, nothing like seeing a mini tantrum from a grown woman. <laughs> I'm happy I thought ahead, but I'm still annoyed that happened. And we're done. So, introducing Over the Garden Wolves, Gregory. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know what you think of Greg in the comments below. He's so precious and I'm so happy with how he turned out. I'm definitely going to print and paint the 3D modelled head of Wirt and make Beatrice of course. I'll have to go out and scout a location somewhere to get some pictures of them all together. Have you subscribed to the channel yet? Make sure you hit that subscribe button to support the channel. Like the video if you liked it, and comment. I love reading all of your comments. A huge thank you as always to my patrons over on Patreon. I'm truly so grateful for your support. With that all being said, I'll see you in the next video.